Yeah. Um, I have two versions, by the way, of this presentation this morning. One of them is like this, and the other one has all the narration on it. And I'm, I'm not going to use this one because that, for me, that is the only unforgivable sin, and that is reading each slide out loud. It just drives me crazy when other people do it, and so I, I don't want to do that to you. But for future reference, you'll probably want the ones that has the word, words on it. So I'll upload both of those. So let me close those this one so that I don't don't get them confused. Okay, let's um. Sorry. Yeah. So here we have a tree, and it is what's called balanced. And this is going to give us our optimum performance. Um, as you can see, the left tree and the right uh, subtree are symmetrical. They, they they look alike. So this is definitely balanced. This one definitely is not. If I were to enter A through G in order, I'd end up with this awful tree, which is actually a linear list. So here we go from order log in performance on the left to uh, li linear performance on the right. So our objective is to make sure that our trees look more like the one on the left than this awful linear thing here. So let's look at it. this tree is, it's certainly a lot closer to the ideal than to the most awful one, to the worst case. And then the question becomes, okay, how much worse? How do we measure how well, how nearly ideal something is? And the way what we're going to do this is we're going to have something called a balance factor for every node. So for this node L, I'm going to take its balance factor by subtracting the height of the left tree minus the height of the right subtree. And that's one minus two. So L is going to have a balance factor of negative one. Now, a lot of the books you will see, in fact, the video that I was basing this on, they did it with the right minus left. And I think I know why they did it. And that's because positive numbers should go to the right of the number line and negative numbers should go on the left of the number line. But I've got it reversed and the book has it saying left minus right. So I'm going to go with that. Um, I might think about changing the book, but then I also have to change all the code. And I don't, I'm not sure I'm, I'm in the mood for that. Certainly not at the end of the semester. So for right now, the height of the left minus right, that's going to tell us how well balanced it is. So leaf nodes are automatically have a balance factor of zero. If I have just a leaf node, there's no left, no right. So by definition, they're balanced. Um, these have a balance factor of negative one because there's one on the right and um, nothing on the left. Now, there's no way to improve on that. There's no way to make this subtree with the S and U more ideal. So we're going to say that this subtree with S and U in it is balanced. As long as the height difference is no greater than one, we're going to say it's balanced. So this LHSU is also ba a balanced tree. There's no way we can improve on it to make it more close to the idea. We can't make it symmetric because there's a even number of nodes. Are you okay with that? When we get here to the top of our tree, uh, now we have it unbalanced because the height of the right subtree is too greater than the right than the height of the left subtree, and that means we're out of balance. So this is out of balance, but not tremendously badly. Whereas when we went back to um, this one here, we've got a balance factor at the root of one, two. Three, four, five, seven of negative seven, which is just, yeah, okay, whoa, that's just awful. Yeah. So this is how we can tell at any rate how well balanced something is. And what we would like to have is ultimately a tree where nothing is more than zero or one for the balance factor of all the nodes. By the way, let's I'll look at a more complicated tree here. So this one here, we have our leaf nodes, which are all zeros. And here is a negative one. And here's a positive one because the left is two and the right has a height of one. So that's the balance factor here. And it gets really unbalanced up around here because I get a negative three. And then it 
<laughs> reverses the other direction um, because I have, depending on where my lefts and rights are. So the question is, okay, great. That is not, now we know how to measure how bad a tree or subtree is in terms of its balance. So the question is, how do we fix that? And it turns out these two very smart people, namely Adelson Vielski and Landis, came up with an algorithm. And that's why they're called AVL. That's not really an AVL tree, by the way. It's a balanced binary search tree. AVL is the algorithm that's going to be balancing it for us. But everybody calls them AVL trees. So, okay, fine. I'll go with it. So what's their algorithm? Okay, let's start with this, uh, this case. This one's a fairly straightforward case. Oops. I need to balance the, the, the trees on this side here because it's right heavy. The solution they came up with is rotate it leftwards around the root. So 10 is going to go rotate left, which will bring the 20 up to the top. And voila, I have a balanced tree. So the 10 drops down and becomes the left subtree of this person, which becomes the root. Everybody see the rotation going on here? Well, that's all well and good, but now what happens if I have something that's already on the left? I bring the 20 up to the top and that's fine. And the 10 should go, oh damn, there's something already there. Now what do I do? And the answer is put the 10 there, that's step A, and then take what used to be on the left and put it on the right. Now, this is the part that everybody says, how do you know that's the right way to do it? You know, that just sort of seems like magic. Okay, why should it be there instead of someplace else? And the answer is, let's put in a number and see that it retains the binary search tree property. So if I had 10 and 20 here, what number could I put in here and still have a, a binary search tree? Somebody give me a number that would fit in there. It has to be less than 20 and bigger than 10, correct? Okay, so we could put 18 in here, correct? Now let's put the 18 in here and see if we still have a binary search tree. Is 18 greater than 10? Yes, it's on the correct side. Is it on the correct side of the 20? Yes, because 18 is less than 20, so it has to be on the left side. And that tells us that where we move this subtree to, it's in the right place. Yeah. This is not a mathematical proof by any means, but it's just a way to convince ourselves that this is not arbitrary. And they didn't say, well, we got to put it somewhere. Let's just put it on the right. What the hell? No, they put it on there so that we wouldn't lose our binary search tree property. Yeah. And as we go through all of these, towards the end, I'm going to go and say, are we sure everything is in the right place? Also, the other thing we can say is um, this. This subtree is to the right of 10, and it's to the left of 20, correct? Well, here it's also to the right of 10 and also to the left of 20, and that tells us it's in the same relative position. So we can either use a concrete example and check to see the number works out, or we can use a little bit of logic to convince ourselves that this is the correct rotation. Okay. Now let's take another tree. This also has a balance factor of negative two, which means we have to fix it. And we're going to use exactly the same technique that we did. We're going to bring the 10 down and the 20 will come up to be the root. And then the 15 will come to the um, right of the 10. And now we still have a balance factor that's too big. Essentially, we've got the mirror image. So by following this rule, we're still on balance. Well, that's not good. So that means we're going to need to be able to do something else when we have this situation. So the question is, the other question is this. Let's go back to this one here. This one worked fine when we did our rotation and, and our moving. And here we have a same balance factor, but this time it doesn't work. It gives us something that's still wrong. What's the difference between these two scenarios? Here's the difference. On both of these, the rotation tree is going to be right heavy. 
The one that worked, we had our right heavy subtree. This one, the right subtree is left heavy. That's the difference. Yeah. That's why this one worked fine, but this one gave us problems because the tree and the one that we're rotating to have the opposite direction. So the question is, what's the fix for this? Yes, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to take this right subtray and we're going to rotate it to the right. Now, if you're at the first glance, you're going to say, well, that's not going to balance the tree, is it? No, it won't. This will not balance the tree, but it'll bring us this. And now we're back in the situation that we can fix. That was our original one where both of them are right heavy. And that's why the rotation to the right works. We're going to take this left heavy one that's causing us a problem and turn it into a right heavy one that we can handle. And then the 15 will come up to the top and the 10 and 20 and we're, we're done. So we take the, the sub child and rotate it to the right. Then we take the root and rotate it to the left. So we're going to have to do a double rotation. And that happens when the root and its and the heavy subchild are heavy in the opposite directions. Um, this shows what happens when we have a complete set of subtrees. And, and again, you'll notice that everything's in the same relative position. A is on the side that's less than 10, and it ends up at the less than 10 side. B is greater than 10 because it was on the right side of 10, and it's still on the right side of 10. And if we were to put in numbers, I could put a 5 here and a 15 here. And if I put in 5 and 15 here, that's still going to be a perfectly good tree. And then here's the one where I have absolutely everything with its subtrees. And this is the one where we need to do our double rotation. Remember, this whole tree is right heavy, but the right hand child is left heavy, which means I have to do the right rotation, which pulls the 15 up and 20. And now I can do the rotate left, which I did before. And again, everything is in the same relative position. The A was to the left of 10. That's where it ends up. The B was to the right of 10. That's where it ends up. C was to the right of 15, which it is. And it was to the left of 20, which it is. And D was to the right of 20, and that's where it ends up. So everybody's still where they belong. It's over a little bit here. So that's when I have a right heavy root, but a left heavy subtree. Yeah. Now, how they figured these, Adelson, Vielsky, and Landis figured this out, I don't know. That's why they are professors of computer science and we're just talented amateurs. Yeah. Now, that's when something's unbalanced to the right. What happens if we have a left heavy root and a left heavy subtree? And this is what, then what we're going to do is we're going to do a right rotation. We're going to pull the 30 down to the right and the 20 moves up into its place. And then we may have to reattach this um, A subtree to make everything work out. And you'll notice we have, again, a left heavy root and a left heavy subtree, or if it's balanced, either one will work. And needless to say, now I have to move this over again. Excuse me, I'm trying to find, there we go. And here we have a left heavy root, but the right subtree is right heavy or balanced. Then what we have to do is we have to do a left rotation to pull everybody into line so that everybody is left heavy. 
And once I have that, then I can do my right rotation around the root and I'm back where I need to be. And that's the AVL algorithm. I'm, I'm, I'm presenting this without, with zero proof, okay? Um, but you may want to look at the code. You may want to um, draw some diagrams and see if you can actually do a rotation of a tree. You know, build yourself a tree and make it out of balance and see, see if you can put it back into balance by hand. Um, in fact, what would be very useful would be to take some arbitrary tree and see if you can figure out the balance factors for all the nodes. Um, I think I have an example here. Yeah. Here, what I do is I put a whole bunch of things in here. And this, when I put things into this tree, well, let's go look at the code here real quick. Briefly, briefly look at the code. So if there's no left child, I can put it in. That won't affect my balance. And then um, if there is a, excuse me, if there's no left child, then I have to create a left child and I have to update the balance of the left child to make sure that everything works. And similarly, if there uh, is a right child, then I put it there. Otherwise, I create a new right child and I have to update the balance. And where's update balance? So I check to see if my balance factor of my node is greater than one or less than negative one. Then I have to rebalance the node. Otherwise, if it's already balanced, then... Uh, I check the balance factors of the left and right children and rebalance again if necessary. So let's compile this. So here I had Albania and Albania and Bolivia. The moment I added Germany, then I had to move Bolivia up to the top. You know what? Why don't I do this? Let's let's do the first few of these and show you what's going on. I think that might be a good idea. So I have Albania. Which one did I put in? Bolivia. Germany. Oh, these these happen to be in alphabetical order already. This is good. Okay. Now this could be exciting. And I'm just going to use the first letter rather than having to use the whole country name. Okay. So let's um, stop sharing. And let's try turning on video. And my next question here is, we'll see if this works here. Okay. So here I have Albania comes in first. Okay. This is, is that in focus, by the way? Now it's good. Yeah. It's very good. Okay. I guess cleaning off the lens is, is something I need to do periodically. Either that or stop eating greasy food while I'm at my laptop. Okay. Bolivia comes in here. Now we have G as the next one. And the moment we have G in here, oh, crap, that we're out of balance. And that means I have to do a left rotation around that. And that gives me Bolivia moves up to the top, Albania and G moves there. Yeah. Great. So that's what I'm left with. Let me re redraw that here. Now, the next one that I added was an L. Okay, L comes in here. Which means I now have to, um, this is two and one. Let's see, okay. One on the left, two on the right. Okay, I'm still balanced. Things get out of balance the moment I add M here. 
when I add M, everything is now out of balance because this G here has a two and a zero, okay? which means this subtree has to move. And that means the G is kind of moved down to there. The M is going to come up to there and the L should be there. Okay. Now let's see, my height here is two, my height here is one, and that means I'm still balanced. Uh, yeah, this is high, yeah, okay, that's fine. Okay. So do you see how this is happening? As I add things in, I move them around to keep everything in balance. Now let's just real quick share the screen here again. And yeah, that's what happened when I added the M, the L had to come up to the top of that subtree. And that's where we have this right here. So now that's at the top of the subtree, whereas it used to be all the way at the, at the um, right. And then when I add um, an S in there, oh my gosh, things get totally weird. And then, then things move all over the place. Okay. Do you want me to try and do that by hand and see what happens? I have no idea. I have no confidence that I know what the hell I'm doing in this, at this particular moment. So just be aware of this, okay? This will be exciting. So I'm going to add an S here. Okay, great. Now, the question is, what's out of balance? Okay, this is a two and a one, correct? So we're good with that. This is a one height, and this is a one, two, three height. So that means this is a negative two, which means we are now are going to have to move things around. Okay, well, we're going to do exactly what the, uh, actually, the, oh, okay, I think this, I, I might actually have this one working. This has to move, or, um, since luckily everybody is right heavy, that puts L up at the top. Yeah. And that puts B here, but there was already something there and I'm going to have to move A over to there. Um, let's see here. Whoa, whoa. I'm going too fast on this. Okay. The L definitely moves up there. Uh, the A is here. I'm not sure if that's the algorithm or not. I'm, I'm not sure I'm attaching it at the right place. This one is really tricky. You know what? Rather than me try and do this without thinking about it thoroughly, I'm going to think about it and I'm going to record this later. How does that sound? Okay. <laughs> Either that or if you want to see me fumble around with it for the next 10 minutes, that would be fun too. Fun for you. Okay. Um, so let's leave that where it is. I just want to take a look at what it ought to look like here real quick. Um, da -da -da -da. No, Bolivia was supposed to go there. That's correct. And then Albania was supposed to go there. Oh, okay. Because I've done that, then I've got Germany, Madagascar, and South G, M, and S have to go where? They have to be under here. This is okay. This is what it's going to look like when it grows up, I believe. That's what I want to end up with as a, as a result. So the question is, how do I actually do that and where do things actually have to go? 
and I'm going to have to examine that. There is one other thing that I can do here. Let's see. And I'm going to upload this picture as well, if I can. Um, it's it's going to be in, in the sample files. Oh, great. Yeah, this is This was from that German um, thing. It's really nice. It was a they they have the right minus left instead of left minus right. But this is a quick diagram that says what happens when the um, subtrees are on both on the same side, and the one on the bottom is what happens when the subtrees have the opposite heaviness. So I can use that, and that will probably help me a lot with this thing that I'm doing here. <laughs> So that's about it. This is a short lecture today, but that's okay. That'll give you plenty of time to work on the assignment. Um, any questions that you might have from out there in Zoom land? No, I'm good. Thank you. Yeah. Good. Valerie, you got any um No, questions? I don't have any questions. Okay. Uh, is it okay if I end everything here then? Yep. Okay. See you um, Monday and See definitely you. Wednesday. Bye. Bye.